no more. When I think about the fact that I could have died last year with cancer between my heart and my lungs. Come on here, somebody. Cancer in my foot, sometimes they can cut it off. Cancer in other parts of my body, they can go in there and get it. But your heart and your lungs are too hard and they cannot defend themselves. And so God says, since your heart and your lungs can't defend themselves, if it get in now, the only thing I can do is take the cancer, wrap it up inside a plastic bag, so that when they go in there and get it, it will be encapsulated. And after God spared my life when I could have been dead last year, you expect me to come to church, sit down, and be quiet, and not step on your new shoes. Come on here, somebody. I didn't come to see you, baby. salvation can be found in no other name. With all that's going on in the world nowadays with Scientology, with the Da Vinci Code, and with, yeah, Dr. Carlton Pierce's doctrine of inclusion, with all these different religions popping up on the earth nowadays, you better make sure that you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. See, what we're really trying to raise up in this church, Dr. Carl, you some believers that have found out too much about him. For anybody to get up in your ear and try to convince you that Jesus is not real. Come on. Let me have a church of about 50 of y'all right here that know that God been too good to you in your life for you to sit down with even 10 minutes trying to discuss with somebody whether or not Jesus is real, baby. I don't have to sit down to find out he's real. I can tell you he's real. Because when I was crazy, out of my mind, he saved me, he raised me, and cleaned me up. Touch your name and say, I know Jesus is real. He is real. He is real. Let me hear him quickly move on. The glory of God have changed my life, literally, y'all. Literally. Uh, that's my, it has become my anthem and my, my story. The glory of God has literally transformed my life the way I see God and changed it the way I see ministry. It has changed it. Amen. Uh, God has given us the answer to every prayer. Even in John 17, the prayer that Jesus prayed, uh, the glory has changed my mind, my attitude, my thoughts. Come on here, somebody. The way I view things. And let me tell you something. Don't miss the moment that you are in right now. I received a rainbow word, yeah, one message uh, from my pastor, Dr. Vernon, the first Sunday we moved in here. Wasn't much, he said, look, go in there and have church, but whatever you do, don't miss the moment. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you miss the moment. Oh, that's what I came to preach to you right now. Some of you don't even realize it, but you are in your moment right now. And sometimes you get so consumed with what people think about you, what they say about you, what they're saying about you. Baby, bring ball. I even got time to entertain what somebody thinking about me because I recognize in this dispensation of time, God held us here and we are in our moment. What moment is that the greatest opportunity for the church to shine? I got one thing on my mind that's exalting Jesus. Come on, somebody, and lifted up that name of Jesus and telling everybody I meet that He's coming back one day. Make sure that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the more you tell people about Him, the more God more doors that God will open up. I I need somebody here right now that wants that spirit of evangelism to fall on you right now to be a soul winner. Come on, the Bible says, he that with his soul is wise. And I don't know about you, I want me a soul winner's crown, baby. When I get to heaven, they're going to be passing out crowns. And one of the crowns I want is a soul winner's crown. I need some folks in here right now that's hungry, that's thirsty, not for another new car, not for another dress, not for a bigger house. Come on here, somebody. That all that's good, but tell your neighbor, I'm hungry for the glory of God. I'm hungry to see people say, I'm hungry. Somebody stand up and sit back down and say, I got my mind set on things up above. I got my affections on things up above. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. God, whether y'all know it or not, y'all, come on. We are dancing right now in the residue. Look at your name and say, residue. See, where we are right now, we can't be still. We can't be quiet. 
Oh, uh, somebody said, well, Pastor, does it take all that? Oh, uh, yes, it takes all this and more, baby. You don't know what all God has done for some people in here right now. The person next to you ought to be on the sixth floor over in the hospital. The person sitting next to you ought to be locked up in Tuckwater. The person sitting next to you ought to be at Draper, Limestone, West Jefferson, Atmore. Come on, talk to me in here. St. Clair County. Somebody ought to be right now in penitentiary. But the fact that you are still here is not because you did everything right. If you're religious, just sit down. But if you, you ain't done everything right, but because of the grace of God, he spared your life. Stand up, put your hand on your hip, and just make some crazy noise and tell somebody, God has been good to me. God has been good. He's been good to me. We're in the residue. We're in the residue right now. I said, we're in the residue right now. that remain after the main part is gone. So whether you know it or not, these disciples right now that just healed the man who was paralyzed, Jesus was already gone, but they were walking in the residue. Come on here, somebody. I'm looking for some folk that will recognize Jesus has fulfilled his ministry. The Holy Spirit has now come down, but now we don't need Jesus down here. We need him to stay up there and to pray on our behalf while we walk around in the residue. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm in the residue. Sick folk got to get healed. Dead people got to be raised up. Marriages got to be fit. Come on, somebody. Sit down with your neighbor and say, neighbor, get in the residue. If you don't know how to pray, get in the residue. You don't know how to make up a head, get in the residue. You need God to touch your body, just jump off in the residue. Somebody give God a praise right now and tell your neighbor. That's a blessing. That there's a blessing in the residue. Sometimes you can just get in the residue. Yes, sir. Yeah, sometimes your car driving and you don't even have no gas. Yes, I need somebody to be real. Right there. How many of you know we say that as a cute cliche, but it's real, that if you can just get your car started sometimes, you can literally ride on fumes for just a little while in the residue of what gas used to be. I wish I had somebody here right now that ever had a straight shift in your life where your starter was messed up and you couldn't bring it.